When it comes to mirrorless cameras, shooting in a log profile is usually a game changer. But also with great power comes a whole bunch of settings. And you ask for it, and today's video, I will be showing you how to set up your camera, how to get proper exposure, and also how to use those often mystifying IRE values. Whether if you're just starting out using low profiles or if you want to sharpen your skills, today's video is going to be about precision and clarity. So let's get the most out of your camera using low profiles. A quick note. I will be using my Canon R6, and with that comes C-Log and C-Log 3. But if you are not a Canon user, you can just replace Canon with your brand. So whenever I say C-Log, for example, if you're a Sony user, you can just replace C-Log 3 with S-Log 3 for Sony Log 3. Also to make this video extra interesting, I will try not to use an external monitor at all, and we will be using your built-in exposure tools within your camera and I will be using standard settings that are the same across any camera brands when you are using a mirrorless, non-professional cinematic camera. So, are you ready? Because I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. This first part will be a little bit different depending on your brand, but I will show on my Canon. So flip your camera into video mode, then go to Canon Log Settings on tab 3, go to Canon Log and turn it on. And we turn it on by picking C-Log or C-Log 3. And then we need to pick a color space. B2709 is just Rec 709, so pick your widest color space, which should be Cinema Gamut. If we are recording externally on a Ninja 5, we need to go with BT2020 due to a Ninja bug. And that's it. That's how you enable log on your camera. So that's the first step to enable our cameras, our mirrorless cameras, to capture video in a log format. And the settings will vary a little bit depending on the brand, but more or less the same. On any Canon camera, it will be this is how you do it. So now when we have enabled our cameras, then I just want to make a short stop on what is log. So log just is short for logarithmic. So it's a non-linear curve. And without going too much into the sort of the nerd of this, let's just say that log enables us to capture more variations of shadow and especially highlights in our image. It gives us more dynamic range to work with. It doesn't give us better quality than your camera can capture. It just gives us more flexibility in post-production to shape our image in a way we want it. Because if we capture in a LUT or in a set color profile, a burned in look, we have less room to alter the appearance of our image. And I would say that's the main benefit of shooting log. If in, someone is telling you, you need to shoot in log because it gives you a better quality image. It's automatically becomes more cinematic. I would say they're wrong. It just gives us the opportunity to shape the image in a direction that we want. So that's short of what is log. It gives you more dynamic range to work with in post-production, but it will also force you to color grade and color correct your video format in a post-production in your NLE. So now when we sort of have prepared the camera for log and we have also sort of made a little short stop on what is log, uh, let's move on with our camera settings. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. But the next step is to enable zebras in our camera. So go to zebra settings and turn zebra on. And then on zebra pattern, you can pick either zebra one, zebra two, or zebra one plus two. This is also a little bit depending on your camera, but for a Canon R6, this is available. And on zebra one, we're gonna pick 55 plus minus 5%. And on zebra two, 80%. And why do we do this? This is why. 55% Zebra equals 55 IRE. Remember what I said in the beginning, right? Those mystifying IRE values. Zebra is just IRE. And 55% IRE is proper skin tone exposure for my type of skin tone. So it can vary a little bit from all the way down to 45 and sometimes even up to 60, but I think 55% is a really good starting point. That gives you. So when you see these lines on your subject's face, you know that you have nailed exposure for that type of skin tone. But remember we set two types of zebra, right? We had zebra two for 
Hold on. So these are now 80%. So we are also getting exposure for protecting highlights. But 80% sounds a little bit low, doesn't it, right? And 55, if you know your Rec. 709, is also low. But this is when exposing in C log 3 or S log 3 for that matter, uh, when converting to Rec. 709, we need to convert all our log footage into Rec. when exporting, making ready. We will see about 10 to 15% increase in IRE when matching Rec. 709. So 55% will be equal to 65 to 70% IRE. And that's where I think skin tones for my type of skin tone is best exposed when sort of delivering in Rec. 709. And 80% will be around 90%. So we are not clipping, but we are close enough. That's how you get proper exposure without an external monitor using Zebras, because they correspond to IRE. But we're not done. We're also going to check out waveforms. But we need the waveforms here to ensure that we also get a good overview of the overall exposure for our scene. This can be really important, for example, if you have windows in your scene and you need to know how much can I overexpose them, or if you have a very dark scene, because you still need to ensure that you expose proper skin tones, even if your uh, scene is light or dark. So let me overexpose this. Give me one second. Now this looks horrible, but if you look at the waveform, you see that it has shifted to the right. Basically, it shows you how much light it is in the scene. So if we're exposing more to the right, it's becoming overexposed. And the more of the waveform that's on the left, the darker the scene. A little bonus tips. If you want to expose for a gray card, especially if you don't have a person, uh, put your zebras into 35%. You can use a sheep pop-up like this. This is from Amazon, it's like $18. I'll link it below. Or you can use a real gray card on a color chart. The next bonus tip or pro tip is to program a custom button for Zebras. I'm gonna use the DOF preview button because it's on the front of the cameras. It's very easy to turn on and off Zebras if you, for example, are using the camera to film yourself. Now when I program it, let me show you. So preview button and voila no zebras and I'm pressing the DOF preview button again and we have zebras my final pro tip and one of my favorite uh, learnings actually is that if you don't want to invest in a real ND filter a variable ND filter or to fixed ND filter to when you're filming outside in the sunshine is to double your frame rate and double your shutter speed that will still give you the same amount of motion blur that can be super helpful also when you are using a drone so instead of landing your drone and putting on an ND filter you can just double your frame rate and double your shutter speed so thank me later I'm just gonna mount this back to the camera. I hope that I have helped you elevate your videography skills and I helped you get more out of your mirrorless camera. If you found this video helpful in any way, please consider giving it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow content creators. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. I think that's it. So stay creative, happy shooting, and I think you should check this video out. Bye-bye.